Want to create an Excel dashboard that looks cool? Let's get started with my 17 formatting tips. Our first tip is to use consistent row heights and column widths. This is going to give your Excel dashboard a neat and tidy look that encourages people to engage with the data. Now let's take column widths. When I set up an Excel dashboard, I'm using only two, only two column widths. I have columns are either spacer columns or they are columns that contain data. Now those spacer columns don't have anything in. They are literally spacing things out. I usually use column width two for those spacer columns. Columns with data in, I use column width eight or 10. So this is the first thing you can do before you do anything else on your dashboard. Set up those column widths. That's gonna help you get a neat and tidy look. Now background formatting is important because it frames our dashboard and it makes the information stand out. It makes our dashboard kind of jump into the user's eye, but it shouldn't be a distraction. And often in Excel dashboards, I see people using very colorful backgrounds that serve to distract the user. So what's the best way? Well, I recommend using this pattern fill, this pattern fill that I'm setting up here. It gives a nice subtle background effect that does the job of the background. It makes the main information stand out without distracting the user too much. Another cool way to make the dashboard stand out and to frame it nicely is to use a shape with a gradient fill. So here I am taking a shape and setting up that gradient formatting. So this is how you do it. Then you can position the shape next to the dashboard. You can see it frames the dashboard, makes it stand out and gives us this cool shadow effect. Now we're looking to create Excel dashboards with a super clean look and one way to do that is to switch off the grid lines. And you can see me doing that here, but switching off the grid lines does present some problems because if our data looks like this with no borders at all, then it can be difficult to read the data. It's difficult for the, for the user to read across the data and to understand it. So we've got to look out for this. So if we're switching off the grid lines, we've got to include at least some borders. And personally, rather than using all of the borders, I like just to use the top and the bottom borders, as you can see here. I think this provides a nice clean look and gives the user the right amount of support they need to read across the data and to understand it. Now, do you need to display units on your Excel dashboard? And this is an interesting one, whether you're working with pounds or dollars, whatever units it might be. I would actually argue that you don't need to show them. And you can see on this dashboard, we're displaying the units. We can see how many times that unit is repeated through the data. It's cluttering up the data, making it more difficult to understand. So personally, rather than including the units, I'll have a message at the top of the table somewhere on the dashboard, just reminding the user what the units are. That means we don't have to repeat the unit symbol through the data. That's going to reduce the clutter, make our data easier to understand. Another way to reduce the clutter is to reduce the number of zeros. And this is particularly important if you're working with big numbers, thousands and millions. Do you need all of those zeros? I think often they can clutter things up. So here's how you can set up some custom formatting to get rid of those zeros. So yeah, we're not rounding the number or dividing the number. The number is still there, but we're just formatting it. We're displaying it in a different way using some of these cool custom formats. And you can see in the video description some other examples of cool custom formats that you can try to reduce the clutter. Again, move us towards that super clean look. Now, color in spreadsheets can be a controversial topic and to some extent, it's certainly a matter of opinion. But with regard to Excel dashboards, there's certain rules that we can follow that are going to help. And the first rule, the golden rule really, when we're talking about color is use it sparingly. Try not to use too many colors. And this is the approach that I use when I'm setting up a color scheme for an Excel dashboard. I'll take the company logo, get the RGB code for it, then go online to an online color scheme generator 
and choose a complementary color to that logo. So you're not using the color of the logo, that gives us too much of one color. You're choosing a complementary color. And then choose one or two other complementary colors, and they're the colors that we're gonna use on our color scheme. So yes, we're only gonna use two or three colors throughout the whole Excel dashboard, predominantly white is the best color. Keeps things simple, helps the user understand what's going on. So we're just gonna use a few colors and then we're gonna use colors for important pieces of data through the whole dashboard. And you can see in our example here, we've got a particular color for an important piece of data in the table and in the bars on the bar chart. So we're using the same color for important pieces of information. So color is supporting user assimilation of the data. Some other points about color, conditional formatting can be helpful, but again, use it, use it sparingly. We don't want the colors changing all the time. That can be confusing. And we've got an example in our file of conditional formatting. But these for me are the main ideas. Keep it simple use colors that match the company identity, create a little color scheme, and make sure that color supports user assimilation of the data. What's the most important piece of information on your dashboard? You should be able to answer that question. If you can't answer that question, make sure you go to your customer and get that information. A common mistake I see is the most important inf piece of information, which is often a profit or loss figure, people tend to hide away down in the bottom left-hand corner of the spreadsheet, which means the user has to work hard to see the most important piece of information. I'd recommend looking at your car dashboard and just look at the speedometer. That's a very important piece of information. How fast am I going? That's displayed very prominently. So for me, the most important piece of information, usually the profit or loss for the scenario, that should be up in the top left corner. Up in the top left corner of the spreadsheet, that makes it stand out and that gives the, the user the information they need. Now your dashboard might have some controls and we have an example in our dashboard here. The user can change some settings that makes different data display. So if the user can change some settings, it's important not to hide those away. And where are we putting the most important information? in the top left-hand corner. So if there's some controls there for the user to use, don't hide those away again, put those in the top left-hand corner and use a highlight color. We know highlight colors have to be used sparingly. So you should only have one or two cells in the spreadsheet using this highlight color. I recommend using yellow just once or twice in the dashboard to make those important input cells stand out. It always surprises me that people don't use at least one alternative font size in an Excel dashboard. And let's go back to the, the example of the car dashboard again. We can see at least one alternative font size here. And I've applied the same principle in our example dashboard. We can see in the top left-hand corner, differentiation in font size. We've got a much bigger font here, making that important information stand out. We can do it really easily in Excel. It doesn't mean we have lots and lots and lots of different font sizes, but just one or two bigger font sizes can really help that important information stand out. Now, if your dashboard does have some dynamic quality, and by dynamic quality, I mean that the user can change some settings and display different data, you can see an example in the download file for this video, then the headers on the dashboard should respond to those changes in settings. And you can see the headers in our example file, they're not actually text, they're actually formulae that's concatenating some text strings together with some entries uh, somewhere else in the spreadsheet. That gives headers dynamic quality. So the headers change according to the user settings, according to the entries in the spreadsheet. And this is how you can set them up. So on your Excel dashboards, do you ever look at the charts and think, is the information display at the right level? Often there are opportunities for decluttering axes, particularly Y axes, so the vertical axis, on bar charts. So we can see an example 
in our download file. What do you think about the level of data display here? Well, for me, this access is cluttered. There's too much data display. The user doesn't need to see all that data. So by doing this, we can go into the chart settings, change the settings for that access, reduce the amount of data to a level that's easier for the user to digest. So again, formatting is supporting user assimilation of the data. We've already spoken about layering in this series. For example, we can use shapes to create a sense of a layer. Now, one kind of invisible layer that I've found super useful is to use cell comments, cell comments. So cell comments means when the user hovers the cursor over a cell, some more information is going to flash up. So again, you should be using this sparingly, but it might work for you just to point out the most important piece of information. Cell comments can provide that additional layer. Now I love including a catch-all row in a table or a catch-all bar on a bar chart, it can really help us simplify. We've got to think, does the customer need to see all that detail? If you have a table with a few rows, with very few entries in, does the customer need that level of detail? They probably don't, it's probably a distraction. So a great way to declutter and simplify is to use this catch-all row in a table or a catch-all segment in a pie chart like this that can simplify the data display and it's something you to consider integrating into your Excel dashboard. Now let's talk about real estate. Where is the prime real estate on a dashboard? Well, in the Western context, the UK, US, European context, it's going to be in the top left corner. So it always surprises me when people put logos there or the dashboard title there, you know, the user knows from the context, you know, probably what the company is and what the dashboard is all about. So I recommend reserving that prime real estate for the information the user really wants to get out of the dashboard. So usually that profit or loss figure, that's why we've got that figure positioned prominently in that prime real estate in the top left hand corner. Another design decision we've got to make is font type. What's the best type of font for an Excel dashboard? Well, firstly, I recommend not using the default Excel font, which is likely to be Calibri on your system. I don't find this font particularly helpful and it might appear a bit lazy if you've just used the default font. And I actually recommend using Arial. The Arial font over the years, that has worked well for me. So try that. Another thing to bear in mind is the brand identity of your customer or your company. Does it recommend using a particular font? So just some things to bear in mind there when we're choosing the font type for the Excel dashboard. Finally, two golden rules for you to bear in mind when you're building dashboards that hopefully will bring everything together for us. Firstly, formatting should support assimilation of the data. Yes, it's fun setting up an Excel spreadsheet, making it look pretty, using some of these advanced format formatting effects, but we're not just doing formatting for the sake of formatting. We're doing formatting for a specific purpose, which is to make the data easier to understand for the user. We've always got to bear that in mind. That's a guiding idea that shapes our approach to Excel dashboards. Secondly, it's important to remember this is a matter of opinion to some extent anyway and then we're going to think well whose opinion whose opinion actually matters here and as Excel developers we've got to be customer focused customer centric you've got to be communicating well with your customer to understand what they want from this dashboard and then you might have to you know put your own opinions to one side because to some extent this is a matter of opinion put your own opinion to one side because your customer knows what they need they know what's going to work best in their business context. So our two golden rules, Excel formatting should support user simulation of the data and your client's opinion it, at the end of the day is the one that matters the most. It's Chris here again. Thank you so much for watching this video. My commitment to you is to produce a weekly video, the best quality I possibly can to help you push your career forward using Excel VBA. I'll also respond to your comments personally. So leave me one now. Let me know what you thought of this video. To reciprocate on your part, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone else. I'll see you in the next video.